Welcome back, everybody, here to the Dota 2 Champions League. I'm Toby1. And I'm the Capitalist. And we have returned for our second yeah. and last game of the D2CL night. It's only a short night tonight. It is. We had our NI D2CL. NIP yep. game uh, postponed mm -hmm. due to the fact that NIP, NIP were playing another tournament. And D2CL be really nice guys this time around. We, uh, what is it about us, Toby? Are, are, is about is us? it just we're the nice guys? We always you know schedule what? matches for other there was tournaments. A, there was a song about nice remain. guys finishing and gas last. and finishing last. Five or last, remaining. if we actually wanted to try and rhyme properly. But <laughs> we always reschedule games Reserve for other tournaments. Time. You notice that? Yeah. yeah. We try and get along. Join Dota League, I mean... It's just the nature of the league that it it's the reason moves we designed it that way <laughs> around tournaments. But like we we like even other tournaments like D two CL. We, uh, we uh, like uh, we have no admin. Yeah, actually, in that we're, we're, whatsoever. we're not connected and to D two CL. It's like yeah, we can move tournaments around for you. But they're, they're a lot nicer in season five. Like that's true. <laughs> there was there was definitely a lot of sticks being thrown around in previous seasons. But D two CL, they're learning, they're growing, becoming bigger and better. Mm -hmm. We're over now on Twitch. After Ten seconds many remaining. comments were made. Hopefully a lot of you enjoy that. Yes. Five seconds And uh, what was also nice to do to see they let us... Why well, could you do on Twitch anymore? And I just like kept having the same thing, same thing. We'll be back on Twitch with Radiant T2CL, ESL, <laughs> we play. <laughs> oh, well, you remember I read that comment earlier today. I was just like, oh, so some guy thinks that Jundra is not dead because now ESL like promotes a huge ours prize pool. I'm just like... Oh uh, no, we were still going to cover it. Nothing has changed literally Ten on Joiners and remaining. at all. The competition was already amazing. Five seconds. Yeah. So, what's your buying? <laughs> it's just a little bit of hype goes around, and they're just like, oh, there are tournaments Reserve going on. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Paint me pink and calm and gumby. Ah. Uh. All right, SF and Clockwork for Power Rangers, the Sniper and Earthshaker. Oh, God, Sniper. That hero, man, is so baffling. I hate that hero right I now. I love that. I hero. loved the old sniper. He was such a fun hero to play. And now I he's love just the sniper. You battle on a level one runes. You go, uh, you murderous to intent. Toby, you don't Toby. just sit back and go. Well, Toby. the best part about my hero is I assassinate harass. Toby, I guess not that anymore. He's a fighter. He's not a. Toby. He's not a lover. Toby. Unless he loves him while he kills him. Toby. And that's just rather. The Toby. Stop. You remember yeah. the complaining yeah. that you had when you were Phoenix? like, no, 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 no. Oh, no, different, let me, different let me complaining. Finish, let okay. me finish. I'll the let you complaining finish. that you yep. had about Five Drow Ranger when the Drow Visage uh, combo came into play. Hang on, hang on. What part and of you that were, did I you were like, about? You were like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of sad now because now, like, when I picked Drow Ranger, it was, like, something special, right? Nobody else would pick it. Uh, but now everybody's picking up Drow Ranger. And you're like, you, uh, you know, it kind of it kind of ruins the specialness of her. For the longest time, she was, like, this oh, special in, hero. In, in that a way, I yes. Would pick up. I think I hurt more when I heard... I, oh, and think heck? about somebody who, who actually plays Dota a whole lot more. <laughs> I, I, I always want to pick Sniper, but now it's like everybody wants to pick Sniper because Shrapnel's OP as hell. I, I, I think, I think the sadder point, point was guy. when somebody told me, and I can't remember who it was now, said, Dirt Ranger is only picked for an aura. That's all I give a crap about Dirt Ranger for. As long as I've got the aura, everyone else is stronger, and Dirt Ranger is just a sit at the back. It's Harney. Harney said it. Yeah, Harney said it. He said, just sit at the back. Like, Dirt Ranger sits at the back of the fight. And just keeps the aura. That's that's all I want. Like, if Dro Ranger dies, remaining. then I'm just like, crap. Like, if they could run Dro as a support, Five they would. Seconds remaining. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Give her the importance. Uh. Anyway, uh, yeah. Lich, Lich. I mean, seriously. Let, let's be honest here. Sniper okay. as a hero is a hero that is not designed for first or second pick. Yet he's so powerful that teams will willingly expose themselves to that very obvious drafting opening, that mm -hmm. vulnerability in their lineup, they will open themselves to that willingly and go for the first pick sniper because Shrapnel's that strong. Yeah, but I, 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 you kind of win your lane. Like that, that's, I know, that's, that's the only thing. That's the like, only thing. Shrapnel, Shrapnel, Shrapnel. Like that, that's the, like, that's oh, the only reason why you delay your pick, isn't it? Because you're like, oh, okay, if I'm gonna give away my laning stage too much, then uh, okay, I should delay well, my no, pick. No examples in sniper. Sniper is a game loser when it comes to if you have distance closing heroes like Clockwork. Like he's Clockwork is like the be all end all of ending sniper's life, right? You get one mm -hmm. hero on top of a sniper. What does he do? 
It doesn't do anything anymore. Yeah, but then you just pick up like a VS or Nurse Shaker. Nurse Shaker fizz, you can push Clockwork out of the cogs, or VS can take a Sniper out of Clockwork out of the cogs as well. Yeah, but if you so always play those games... Then Sniper games can literally like be in, a, in, a, in like his own little fortress just pew-pew-pewing from okay, the top well, of the hill. Okay, fine, Toby. What <laughs> happens if you have a second closer like a Brewmaster? Okay, then you screw. Team ban. <laughs> Right, I'm not. I'm not saying that like Hellraiser automatically loses this lineup. Right, <laughs> it's it, not. it it's still going to be a very very strong lineup. The point being is that like Sniper is such a strong hero, but solely because of Shrapnel that they're willing to pick up a hero that is normally designed to be like extremely one sided. Like he's extremely one dimensional hero and is not Five a very like like very broad hero. Right. The heroes that we're seeing nowadays, Juggernaut, Troll, Reserve like uh, SF even in some regards, like the way they build stats there, remaining. they like do physical damage, but they're also decently <clears throat> tanky. They have good amounts of magic damage in the case of Die SF. You know, they, they're pretty broad heroes. They do a lot of different things. That, Sniper's just like, I sit in the back and shoot people. <laughs> And then if anything gets <laughs> on me, I die. Yeah. You know that's not t that's Radiant not Sniper's team. voice. I know that's not Sniper's voice. That was he, more has, he has a much more annoying voice. That was more Timbersaw's voice. Uh, it's not, uh, Timber saw a little bit more higher pitch, but yeah. So I like what Power Rangers are doing here. Uh, I'm a little bit weird about the the Lich pickup. Uh, it does obviously protect it, them against the physical damage a lot, which is it makes me good. feel like they're gonna try and run a dual lane in that mid. Oh, probably most uh, likely. I, I don't know if you can even get away with it by running like. Ten I don't know if you have, like, you don't have, don't have Lich and SF in the same lane, but could you get away with Lich and Brewmaster in the lineup against Five a sniper? Would that be remain. possible? Say that again? A Lich and Brewmaster up against the Sniper in mid. Is that even going to be a lane that Brewmaster can do without having, like, like Lich get one point sacrifice, one point Frost Armor, and he gets a poor man shield? I think if, if there is any melee hero that can go up against Sniper, it's Brewmaster. And obviously Lich makes that even more favorable to you. So I, I, I don't know about the second level of Frost Armor, but... Yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm down with the dual lane of Lich Brewmaster or Lich SF and have Brewmaster safe lane farming. I, I don't really care too much. It kind of depends on the off laner of Hellraisers and what exactly they, they wanted to be running. Well, they right have now it looks centaur. like a centaur. Yeah, so in which case you need to identify, Five okay, what's the best laning matchup for me then? Is Brewmaster versus Sniper better? Because I'll be able to get... Um, Last hits, plus you have a Shadow Fiend who can harass the Centaur if you're left alone in lane. Mm -hmm. You know, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. Um, at the same time, maybe you want that faster Brewmaster Blink Dagger, which you can probably be achieved better in the safe lane. Um, and but as long as you have mm -hmm. Lich keeping the lane back for the SF, he can do all right versus Sniper. You, if, if you're going to do that, then you need to have um, a hero who's a lot more active in the lane to keep the Centaur away from the Brewmaster. Yeah, if, if you're going to do that. Yeah, you're going to need a very active support, for sure, for Power Rangers to make up for the very obvious um, lack of control and everything else from the Lich. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what exactly fulfills that role. Um, Personally, I'd like to just see the SF go go out to that top lane, let the Lich and Brewmaster run, else? so you can play a little bit more of a farm-orientated hero in towards the... Maybe like, like a semi-jungler as well that could do that kind of thing. I don't know if you'd really want to go the full thing like an Enigma, uh, but the Chen was banned out before, and we should just go for a Rubik. Not exactly what I was searching for up against a Centaur, um, because he doesn't really zone out the Centaur. Even with the Brute's first Rubik, he doesn't zone out the Centaur. Yeah, honestly, um, I'll, I'll tell you right now, Toby, I was going through the checklist in my head of all like all the supports, and they were all banned away. So I think Rubik <laughs> was just kind of like what was left for them. And it's not that Rubik is a bad hero, necessarily. He's not nearly as harassive as you want him to be uh, up against a Centaur, but he does have some really good steals. Uh, Shrapnel, amazing, from the Sniper. Same goes with Assassinate. You've got Fisher from Earthshaker. Um, Centaur, some of Centaur's abilities can be amazing situationally. Same goes with Eventual Spirit. So, um, overall, this is a, a pretty decent Rubik game, and he's just kind of all that was left, I think, when it comes to harassers. I was going to say Witch Doctor, that was banned, uh, and the last ban for HR. Then you had, like, Skyrath Mage already being battle. taken out, as well as uh, the normal uh, support heroes, <laughs> such as Lion. So, yeah, I think it was just kind of what they were left with, which... Will still fit fine for them. Looks like they're going to go for the Lich SF lane. Um, I'm down with that. I think the power of Rubik Brewmaster, you're probably not going to be able to get the kill necessarily, but you can kind of threaten the Centaur with the Telekinesis pull into the, the clap. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Centaur stun goes out, and you probably don't Except get Except you're not going to have Centaur there. It's the Bristleback on the offline instead. Okay, now that was something I would thought about saying just because the Centaur 
getting a fast blink dagger, I think, is pretty important versus SF. It's it's kind of like the, in the same boat with, with the Brewmaster. Like you can rush up your blink dagger carriers, but yeah, exactly. If you sacrifice your bristle back a little bit too much, to like you have to make sure you buy a window of opportunity for him to catch up later on. Yeah, and I think I think Centaur will be able to lay down enough aggression with a fast blink dagger. The problem is with um, a fast blink on Centaur in this game, it's not necessarily good versus Clockwork nor Brewmaster. So you're only really threatening one core with that, um, and obviously the two supports. So Mance is definitely going to have to do a lot of work with this Centaur, but it should be enough room to buy the for both begins. the Bristleback as well as the Sniper. Can't forget about him. And we'll see, it looks like uh, this is probably one of the most deadly mid lane duos uh, in the game right now is the Earthshaker roaming into the Sniper's lane. So it's still a very dangerous lane to be sure, but uh, I think in the long run, the Lich, the power of the Lich deny should allow the SF to triumph. But we'll see if there are any mistakes made against that shrapnel. The only downside is SF's got one less chance to get a soul every single time. And yeah, that shrapnel's a pain in the ass. Even J4 can't come close on that. And they also need to fix, please, the Valve, if anybody's listening, fix the graphic of shrapnel. It's bigger than the graphic implies, which is a big problem. Well, so it looks like shrapnel's covering more area than it really is. No, 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 no the exact opposite. Okay. In that the actual damage coming out is, is much bigger AoE than the graphing implies, which is tough as a mid laner when you're trying to stay just outside of the shrapnel range in order to get CS, but then you realize you're actually taking damage. I'm also then going to flag the fact that all of these, I think it's already been flagged as well, but the range boxes are all incorrect as well. Like the visual range box, like you look at shrapnel right now, this is not actually the legitimate range of shrapnel. You can't cast shrapnel that far away. It's actually yeah, shorter than that. Maybe it's based on the outside part of the AoE instead of the center, which is a little weird. Well, see, so wait, you then we had to cast and then say that then the AoE will actually reach this far, which means then yeah. the ring is out there. Uh, I think that that's maybe how they did it. Hmm. But it would, I think it would make more sense if it was the center. Did she Ra's dead? Yeah. This, this was a 2 1 lane, man. Yeah. This is a 2 1 lane, and, and he's just. You make one mistake up against the, the shrapnel and, and you die. It's the Fissure into the shrapnel exceptionally strong and this is why uh, the SF really had to play that carefully. And He does end up making that critical mistake. So now he's going to start falling behind in CS. He loses a couple souls. Fortunately, the Lich will start taking control of the runes as well, which is helpful. But, for the dead. but at the same time, like you've still got another room which cannot be contested. Clockwork's too busy trying to battle up against Mantis. Sure, he's going to get a hell of a lot of experience right now. He's doing a really good job as well, burning off that mana of Mantis. But it's still a 10-3 Centaur up against an 8-2 Clockwork. So they're, they're basically neck and neck with farm. Obviously, Clockwork can't get everything underneath the tower. He's definitely going to give it his, his all. Um, but so you got really, really close levels on that on that bottom lane. If Clockwork disappears to pick up a rune, he's probably just end up dying and losing that advantage. Yeah. So he has to stick around. There is a possibility that Cheshire Cat can get a kill up against Mantis he, if he burns through all the Manta on uh, uh, the man on the Centaur. Mm -hmm. He can try and go for a maxed out battery assault build, which he may end up considering here. You notice uh, Cheshire Cat is holding on to uh, two different levels right now. Yep. So he could even go for like a 2-2-0 build and just really try and press that advantage um, when it comes to just, just spamming the Centaur out. Sniper. Already getting really over aggressive again over on Sunra. What's he actually purchasing up right now? So, right, so he's going to build into the into the Ring of Aquila as well as bring, in, bring a new salve out to himself. But he's really trying to get up in the face of Sunra. I think he got a little bit more back than he bargained for. Oh, there's your cog. Battery assault. He's only got two points up in it though. It wasn't three because he had the extra point up into the rocket. And Mattis is just able to tank it out. Meanwhile, in the top lane, they do manage to get a one-for-one -one trade off. It looks like, as the first back will be able to get the Rubik in exchange for the Vengeful Spirit. So, uh, again, goddamn coming in at the right time with the rotation to ensure that extra kill. So, not a bad trade off, especially since you're intercepting the safe lane farmer's um, little bit of a CS and slowing down that blink tiger. And, and this sniper. Did you uh, no. Oh, well, actually, he is because Urshik is going to come in, which means Sniper's going to leave another two attacks oh, into him. He got one. There's your second one with the support coming in from the Vengeful Spirit in time. And there was nothing really more that J4 could have done for that fight. 
Yeah, he missed that raise there on the SF. If he had hit the, the sniper, I think he gets that kill. He still dies, but he gets the kill. Yeah, so very unfortunate there, missing another opportunity. Plus, goddamn sitting on a haste rune, which the Bristleback is going to refill his bottle with, which means he can actually be very aggressive, knowing that he has that, uh, that fallback mm -hmm. and could even get the kill on Seneco if he's not careful. At least there is an upside for Power Rangers. Cheshire Cat's also running out with his own bottle. As I'll pick up that bounty rune for himself. Another movement coming in from Goddamn. They can see him. The Dara Observer was there, so they knew he was walking down during that last engagement. And Sunrise gonna be careful just how far he comes. The Lich just lets off a Frost Blast. It's like Goddamn doesn't even really care. He's just standing there. Yeah, he's a tanky hero. He's like, go ahead. If you go on me, I'm gonna fisher you, and then you're gonna be surrounded by shrapnel charges. So, mm -hmm. uh, you go ahead and try. And that fissure block distance too, like it doesn't even matter if you get the full block off, if you do obviously it's fantastic. Because shrapnel is just such a heavy slow, and you can code it down so hard as well, it looks like bottom lane. Uh, Cheshire Cat, the Hoof Stomp, just needs to find some space here for Manus. He runs to the tree line, Rocket, ah uh, it's on cooldown for too long. And the Tranquil Bridge will end up healing the Centaur up. Yeah, yeah. but you, you're able to get like this, this big array of slow that you can't walk yourself away from. So even if you want to walk through the choke point, you have to walk into the shrapnel. Yeah. There's no way to evade it. So Cheshire Cat just barely missing out on that kill. Still has enough mana to bully his way in, uh, but Tranquil Boots from the Centaur is healing him up so quickly. Yeah, not enough damage out there from, uh, well actually Dread just wasn't in, in range for that stun to stop the TP out, but Brewmaster will die even with stick charges. He'll die up in the tree line. And there's no extra support to come in and help him out here. Yeah, Shishir Cat, I mean, he better make something really big happen. And unfortunately, Goddamn, I think, is already intending to protect Mantis. I think he feels like Mantis is high enough HP now that he doesn't have to stick around. But top tower is under attack. I'm not sure if I agree with that, especially if uh, Shishir Cat can pick up level 7 battery assault. And he's got some support coming in, so Nako's going to help out. But you do have an Earthshaker still with a TP. So if he needs to come back to protect him, he can do so. True. He was only down here before to help um, Center also find his mana pool attack. again. And just help him regenerate. I think they're battling up on top lane. Yes, the Brewmaster. Still no level 6. They'll off the Stampede as well. And just that extra movement to get up to the walls of the Brewmaster and get those cool stacks up. So the Brewmaster's down the top lane. We go 5 for 1 so far. Yeah, complete complete shutout it feels like power rangers just losing so much the early game right now they don't necessarily like they don't even have a, a late game advantage because you're dealing with sniper and bristleback in the late game <laughs> um plus uh, a lot of good utility supports so they they got some serious issues right now power rangers and they i don't know the harder they get shut down in laning phase the more time ditchy Ra has to spend in the mid game farming his items back up which he can definitely do the question is whether or not he can do it fast enough to be still a mid game presence sniper you need to juke right then the fissure think about throwing down by goddamn but he also realized he's too far out of range for that to really work now the fissure will be thrown at clockwork taking a little bit too much damage from the tower and the bristleback tp's himself very very far in to cop two raids to the face the back is at least in 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 facing sun robber Sonico, he's got five cool stacks on top of him he's dead with that last little spray cheshire cat's got no way out of this one apart from maybe battery assault with the rocket damage it is enough to get the kill well there's not enough mana in here for the Earthshaker to go for another stomp but with madness moving up He's going to try and turn him around here. Manus needs more movement speed. It's 12 seconds until he's got Stampede. Goddamn is moving over, and there's your Shrapnel. Slow him down and just double edge for the kill. At least PR was able to get some level of trade-off in that mid-fight. Yeah, I mean, they got a really good trade, honestly. They got one for two. They shut down the Sniper. They get a kill on the Bristleback, who was over-farming. And now Dichy Raj just picked up a haste rune uh, with the space that was built by that... Uh, oh, Afo may fall here. Another bounce? It goes oh the wrong God. way. It goes the wrong way, and now he no, turns. Oh, is that enough? Is it not? It's enough. Oh. That range is ridiculous. God damn. Well, okay. He just gave back to Sun Ra what was uh, taken away by by Afo. Bit unfortunate there. I mean, I would say you have like a eighty percent chance to get that kill, and just the bounces were not there for the Lich. Man, it's getting close towards that blink dagger. Once he's got that, then this. Like, PR's gonna be a little bit more on their toes. How's Brewmaster looking for his? He's so far away. Like, 0 for 2, he went Arcane Boots as well over on a Brewmaster, so no direct Blink Dagger. I would say there's a significant difference between uh, the way HR, like, very similar things are happening right now. They're, they're 
getting to the safe lane farmer, right? The Brewmaster kind of shut down. Same goes with the Centaur. He has felt the pressure of the clockwork a little bit and has been forced to back. The mm -hmm. difference is you've got two different, very different offlaners here. Clockwork, for the side of Power Rangers, very much an early game hero that doesn't need farm. Well, Bristleback is definitely a hero who needs farm and snowballs heavily if he's able to get an early amount of it. So Bristleback should snowball so much harder than the Clockwork unless Cheshire Cat just continues to make big plays, which he certainly can. Like, he is, in my opinion, has been kind of the best player in Power Rangers in-game uh, the whole entire time. Like, FNG was obviously a big star. But in-game, Cheshire Cat often displayed just as much strength as FNG did when it came to drafting. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a hook right here. Good opportunity to get Mantis, but... Yeah, with five seconds on the sidelines, and then also a regeneration coming in for the Centaur, he would have had to do it just before. I uh, got a fissure in towards mid. Shrapnel number one, but uh, Senra with strength treads, he's able just to walk himself away, back behind his tier one tower. With only a level one swap, that VS isn't gonna get himself in range. And uh, Cheshire Cat just rotates the bottom lane. J4 and Sonico, they've already TP'd themselves down. And there's your hookshot. Infamatus, battery assault, and Mantis has to sit here and tank it up. He's thinking about the hoof stomp with the Fade Bolt as well as the Frost Blast Stampede. Okay, it's committed, but it was all too late. He still goes down. Yeah, really nicely done. Again, the right timing. Look how close he was to the Blink Dagger. Uh, Power Rangers knew, like, okay, he's he hasn't died yet. We've kind of shut him down, but he's still going to get a Blink very early. We need to stop that. Smoke uh, just Ra, run. Yep, there oh goes God. your wave of terror. One raise as she gets swapped back up again into the Fissure Assassination as well. He's helping from down inside the river. The Brewmaster's going to let the split off. Remember that Brooksback can do a hell of a lot. That's probably why he's sent up in towards the air to start with. Dread, no sun available. In fact, he's going to give over that magic missile to the Rubik as they pick up the Brooksback, stun him up, and hold him in position. A lot being lost here by hell raises in just the last minute. Yeah, good trade-off, especially since Roger needed that double kill desperately, considering how badly he was doing in the top lane. He's now got a Blink Dagger before the Centaur. Uh, something I would not have expected at all, especially with the Centaur going for the Tranquil build while Roger uh, goes the Arcanes. Mm. So Power Rangers definitely turning this uh, the course of this game around quite heavily. I mean, it's gone from 5-1 to one to 9-7. to seven. They've definitely closed the gap a bit. Especially since in CS they're doing quite well. The Sniper has actually really faltered in CS up against CSF recently. I'm not sure if he's just been going for kills that much. Um, yeah, but also the, the fact that SF farms that quickly. Well, they've been looking for it in the middle lane, but it keeps turning around on them when they're, when they're least expecting it. And HR keep trying to put force the issue without having the initiation. Like, the only initiation they've really got is that ES long-range fissure. And now they're just running themselves into mid. Man, he's still, like, a, a hundred goal away from his blink dagger, now gonna be even further away. They try and force down the tower, there goes your stampede. And it's allowing Hellraiser to back out of here. They're trying to fight before they got the items that allow them to do it with an advantage. And PR are loving this. Like, with blink daggering Brewmasters, Clockworks with hook shots. Rubik is the perfect controller as well when you are going to dive in. He's got his ulti as well, so there's, a, there's an easy steal for a stun or whatever, el whatever else they want. Yeah, and the pickup, uh, Shishir Cat is going to be going for a blade mail. So the blade mail really effective versus Sniper. Uh, super effective versus the Centaur as well. Like, obviously, he can't double edge you. Uh, and then that just leaves the Bristleback, which is still going to be effective versus the Bristleback, but for a different reason. Uh, it's just because you get that extra bit of armor. You may not return that much damage back to him, but you will at least increase your survivability versus him by quite a lot. They're looking for a dive on top lane. This Bristleback, however, didn't put a single point up in Dale's Lagu. So picked up, thrown back down again. The quills are going to be stolen by the Rubik. Not exactly what he was searching for, especially when he's got two stacks on top of him at the moment. Dread trying to catch up to him for just for a quick stun, and that means the Rubik will end up dying here. Uh, it, maybe you can just save onto the mana as well. One wave of Terra, one quill spray, and then a beat down by the Bristleback. Oh, uh, then bottom river. Looks like goddamn. Frost Blast, raise one, raise two. The shrapnel came, but it was all too late. And wouldn't have really done enough anyway to stop P PR from getting that kill. Yeah, if he'd gotten off that Fisher maybe a second earlier, maybe he could have, like, ran for it, Echo Slam, and just sacked his life in exchange for maybe an assassinate kill. But either way, uh, it would have been, I think, a win for Power Rangers. So. Good setup by them. Roger's going to go for initiation at the top lane, I'm, or at least push them back. I don't think he's looking for initiation. That clockwork yeah. only just TP'd in towards the middle lane, so Cheshire Cat is not ready to fight here. He's going to try and hookshot oh, no. in, but it's just not big enough and uh, won't reach the sniper. 
So reveals his position, doesn't find any opening. And you still got Bristleback having a fantastic time up on top until Cheshire Cat. Well, he's rotating up, and there's your TP out from the Bristol. He's going to come in towards the mid lane. And here comes Hellraiser again, going to try and force the issue. But this time around, the Blink Dagger is arriving for Mantis. So it's going to be a different fight here for Hellraisers. They have all their ultis up. The Bristleback's on the front lines. Goddamn. I'm not quite so sure about this one. Here comes your Lich ulti, the Earthshaker. There's your split up for Goddamn. Just being pummeled down by, in fact, the Rubik of all people. While well, now, Bristleback up and towards the air. The Wreck of Souls being done. It does manage to connect at the right time. But you got a stick charge to bring the Bristleback back up again, but not far enough. And Manus cannot get in there for a good hoof stomp. There were three heroes next to each other. But if he did that, they'd have to commit to really fighting here. And the sniper was sitting low ground and not ready to be, be really involved. Yeah, and look at that. They rebuff the five man of Hellraisers in the middle lane and then immediately jump over to Roshan to claim that one. So this is actually a, a huge like change up from Hellraisers, I would say. The way that Power Rangers established like an early lead, I felt like the HR were actually ahead in network, but it, it still felt like Power Rangers were getting the better of the engagements for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Like again, the off lane comparison I think would be one of the biggest ones. Uh, they've definitely changed the course of this game quite heavily where Power Rangers will be able to execute a lot of mid-game aggression now where previously I would have thought they would have been forced into playing a lot of farm role in the 15 to 25 minutes. Oh, Power Hell Rangers, they're up way too far. The hook shot up, catch that too, locks him inside the cogs with the blade mail up. You're already going to have the sniper dead. You've got the, the centaur got popped very, very quickly. The fish is already been sold as well by sneakers. They can slow down the bristle back as well. Three heroes lost. This with the Agency model team, big advantage and could just force down the middle lane now. Oh, uh, yeah, except the fact they've just lost their creep wave, unless they can keep a little bit more of it alive. That was a great initiation there from Roger. I mean, he knew he was pretty much sacking his life. The amazing thing was that he actually survived. Um, but he was just like, look, I'm making the initiation. I'm going to die, but I don't have my ultimate anyway. It's fine. As long as you guys get a good fight out of it. With the Cheshire Cat making the big plays on the clockwork, that double cogs was just amazing. So he easily wins the fight for them. And at this rate, he can get like uh, his second item by 20, 25 minutes. Fisher to start with, Manus, double hoof stomp, able to catch up both Sunrise as well as Sneako, or triggers the Agency Mortal Brewmaster, no ulti available for him, so he will still go down, but Cheshire Cat, he was waiting for that sniper to come into position, with the blade mail up, there's no way that that Centaur can battle up against him, Dread trying to go for the saving grace right now, but, well, maybe he can have enough with Goddamn returning back to the fight, Sunra towards the front lines, he's got all of his races back off cooldown again, so one long range and a medium, should be able to kill off Dread, but he needs to get the timing right, there's your one long range, Nico could just turn around, He's got Totem Stomp, just use it and go for Dread. Okay, doesn't uh -oh. even need it. The Shadow Fiend just brings him down. One more Souls, throwing back the Bristle back, buying more space here, Sneeko. While the rest of the Dire Creep Wave bring down the tower. This Bristle back doesn't want to give up the Ghost. He's got three Quill Sprays over on the Shadow Fiend, but a Yule Scepter. A quick buy on the Blink Dagger as well, but yeah, they're going to get away. Maybe not Sneeko until he picked uh, up a Fissure. Fissure. And yeah, oh, mistake he, only, there. he only got one on the stun, which means he will die here. He's going to earn charges. The movement's coming in, though, from the Brewmaster. He can blink clap and actually almost kill off Goddamn if he's got enough for it. There goes your clap already in the Brussels back, and he'll TP away to safety. So the Rubik does still survive, even though missing up that Fissure. Messing up the Fissure. Oh, man. Net worth really taken off here for the SF as they get a bunch of kills. He hasn't died recently. Now he's got the... I mean, you're talking about gap closers, right? Clockwork 101 versus Sniper. Great counter. Then you've got the Brewmaster, pretty good counter in his own right as well. And now you've got a third one, SF, who had the Yules early on into the fight, has finally finished up his Blink Dagger. That is another gap closer right there. Blink in, get the Yule Scepter, pop the ultimate, and uh, that's going to one-shot the Sniper, or many other heroes, potentially. I mean, Centaur, any of the supports, those are all potential threats as well, especially with the way the Centaur still only has that Blink Dagger. The same thing applies to him as it applies to the axe. You aren't that tanky of a hero when you rush Blink Dagger like this. Uh, it's es what you especially do. when you're also going to jump in, you're going to double it, so you take away a huge portion of your life points with no regeneration or protection from the damage you, you inflict to yourself. Yeah, it's always what you do with that Blink Dagger and the pickoffs that you get with it that allows you to tank up significantly. So We've got a lot of movement coming up to top lane. 
Cheshire, Caswell, Sneaker. They're actually coming up through the mid lane. Swap. And looks like we're already going to swap. So they go for the SF and they got him down straight away. The Lich Holding is coming in, but Dread able to drag it up because he had the Stampede. But the Fissure dropped down by the Rubik. What else can he pick up right now? Pick him up and actually just throw Goddamn back to the other side of the Fissure line. Close towards where he is. Cheshire Cat chasing after Dread, but he's not getting... Oh, now he is. He's close enough to get the Battery of Soul Kill. A Goddamn, one more Fissure. Rubik, he's got his Fissure back off cooldown. But this uses the Fade Bolt to finish the Earthshaker. So they take the top tower, and PR did all of that without having the SF. Will he do anything in that engagement apart from his death ulti? Yeah, I mean, Seneca had like, uh, um, not Seneca, Ditchy Ra had uh, a little bit of uh, slow reaction there. Could it should have been kind of been ready for that swap, or at least the Blinken Centaur stun. Mm -hmm. He could have at least used himself, and that would have Radiance delayed his death significantly. Would have, bought, would have bought time for clockwork, then just to hook in, and then yeah, exactly. You but would have had the easy, the easy combo. You know, none, of, none of that matters, right? <laughs> like Roger making the initiation, like going like, oh, I'm probably gonna die, or them getting initiated on the S SF, probably gonna die. Who cares about those zeros, man? Cheshire Cat is carrying this game so goddamn hard. He <laughs> single-handedly won that fight by being able to force staff himself in a position there to get on the sniper right away, and then when the sniper manages to get out of that mm -hmm. uh it still doesn't matter you got a swap from the bench or something like that and then you're just like clockwork still had hook shots and we still walk down the uh the sniper all the other heroes super squishy super uh super susceptible to that battery assault you catch your cat just like ran from hero to hero taking them down with uh the little plink 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 of battery assault you, you are right about Cheshire Cat. Like it's it's the openings that he was finding. Even that mid fight before, he sat up on top of the, on top of the hill, like this little staircase in the mid, and hooked himself down to the sniper because yeah. he knew exactly where the sniper was going to be. Like if your fight's up in this little box area here, the sniper's always going to be this far back, because then he's just able to attack from that range without putting himself in any kind of peril. But as you were also saying during the drafting stage, when you pick up a sniper in the early stages, then. Uh, you have to make sure there aren't any jump heroes that can catch up to you and 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 just reduce that gap. But right now the clockwork's doing it perfectly, so the brewmaster can just focus on the rest of the heroes as well. Yeah, I mean there there are always heroes in Dota that are basically just strong one two pickups because they are just all all around strong and they're not heavily countered by any one hero. And then there are like situational pickups like Sniper, Dyer's who are definitely hard under countered. And they're hard countered by many different Dyer's kind of heroes. Uh, so you can't pick them up in the first one, two, and expect Radiant's not to have something slip through the pool that's going to counter you heavily. In this case, it's uh, the Clockwork picked up in the first one, two, and the Brewmaster in the three, four. Uh, look at that Rubik. He's so ready to jump. He's going to try and steal Fissure right now. Couldn't get close enough. He gets swapped down, and the Blink Dagger put instantly on the cooldown. Hoofstomp, at least get the pickup over from the Centaur. But the Sun on the Brewmaster from the Vengeful Spirit going to cause some problems, and now they go into the split. Who do they want? They at least want to bring the Brussels back out of place. Lich has a little bit more space. He does get assassinated and then fissured as well. More than enough damage to find these pickoffs. And the Fire Brew Link's also down for the count. So PR has lost all of their damage here. They couldn't bring down the tower. Cardi's probably going to finish the job here. Actually, no, Hershey will get the denial as Cardi just isn't strong enough. But there's two heroes down for Power Rangers, but surprisingly, only their supports. Yeah, awkward engagement to be sure. I mean, Seneco got caught by the, the swap because he was sitting up very aggressively on this hill and they were just basically trying to zone out the enemy team, but then he gets caught out by the wave of terror, swapped down the cliff, and then Brewmaster is forced to jump in and pop his ultimate just to try and, try and zone out the enemy team. But now, this is a big opening for Hellraisers. I mean, they just got two kills. Even if it's just support, it's good pickoffs. They're going to be able to take some map control, plus the Brewmaster ultimate is down, and I think that's probably one of the most significant factors here. Uh, is that they're pushing into a fight that won't have Brewmaster Ultimate Dyer's that takes down one of the gap points. But it is still going to have that Clockwork hookshot into a large Requiem of Souls. Yeah. So they have to be very mindful of that. And this Rubik has still been very damn good about uh, getting a lot of these steals. Uh, okay, Observer for Observer. God damn, he should have seen that. Sonika was walking forward, and now the Sampede has to be used to get him away. The Lich ulti is actually going to be used for more of a mini stun than anything else, allowing Roger just to blink himself down, but the kill does go the way of the Rubik. While SF, oh. he let off his Requiem of Souls. That looked a little bit off, off target there, and now just going to TP away. Oh, stop, there's no mana! He didn't use his stick charges! He had to use stick charges, and then I, I think he had it before he jumped in. So I've just lost an easy pickup over on the SF. Because the SF didn't trigger any ability, so yeah, he, he had the mana. Meanwhile, Cheshire Cat could have had a kill on the Centaur, at least could have stopped his TP, but 
Uh, kind of messed that one up. First real mistake I've seen Cheshire Cat make all game. Uh, but he's about to finish up his Aghanim Scepter, so 300 gold away from that, especially with the bounty at the top rune. Uh, should be kind of set. Our SF is going to get a big time item here, but what do you think it's going to be here, Toby? He's got. Well, uh, I, I'm going to okay. put my money on a BKB cap. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's probably the right one. Yeah, I might even just go completely off the rocker right now and try and summon some of that pixie dust that the beat that the blitz holds onto, uh -huh. and say the next prediction is going to be an agony scepter for a clockwork. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good call there, Toby. I I don't think he's going to go for <laughs> the Yules. <laughs> Scotty and BKB build. I was I don't looking, I don't I was looking for a hot clockwork, man. I, I don't think just, he's Just take him up, items. run in there. Remember the old, the old saying? Like, if, if you don't have the life points, don't have the blade mail. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. I don't know who actually made that saying. Uh, we actually got like a Bristol Bay. A, a going to finish up his SMY soon, too, as well. He's already got the Yasha back in base. Problem is though, he's uh, he'll drop the stick for it. Looks like he's he's halfway through a couple of items, so he's sort of got protection with that with the hood of defiance as well as the vanguard. But everything's just so mid game focused. Yeah, he'll finish up the SMY. Center. Same goes with the sniper. Clockwork. Secondary hook shot. That one is of the Aghanim scepter. Stun's gonna come. Sneeko needs to buy some more space. Pick him up and stall Stampede. Sending Cheshire Cat a long way back, but now remember, hook shot off cooldown. Two seconds time. He's looking for the angle with the frost blast and the clap from the brewmaster. There's your angle going all the way down to the Earthshaker, and that SF can just mop them up. They have the Aegis model behind them and Power Rangers. They came so quick out of the pit to fight that because they finished Roshan so quickly as well. Yeah, Cheshire Cat is really impressive. Like the, just the small things of like how quickly he killed his cog in order to get out of range of the Enchant Totem, and the hit the Earth Shaker would have uh, landed after that. You know, kind of keeps him safe. It's the small things he does as a clockwork that are that are impressive and ranks him in my mind one of the best clockworks uh, in the world. Actually, under that's a pretty big claim. I know, I know. Like for for a team like Power Rangers that you don't like think is being like necessarily top world class. Mm -hmm. I think they do kind of have some specialties of their own. It used to be like the Venture Spirit Aggro Tri. Shit, your cat was always a strong clockwork then, and it's, I would say, gotten stronger since then. Did you rob being chased by the sniper? He'll be fine, though. He's, he's got BKB, Yules, and an Aegis Immortal with a Blink Dagger. Yeah, I highly doubt that. HR, unless their 5v1 can actually kill him at the moment. I'm saying a lot of Scotty lately, but I would love to see Scotty on SF as the next item. Just because I think his, the items he has now are mid game enough. Then he should look towards that late game item. Could be butterfly, but um, I mean headshot still kind of goes through that. Plus sniper is a pretty good MKB hero as well. I'm, I'm kind of liking this guardy even more for the for the fact you'd be able to kite the Brussels back a little bit more, so you, you could at least play the distance game up yeah. against him. And you do have a lot of damage. Like obviously butterfly increases your armor significantly, but you do have a lot of damage that's indirect. Uh, not Bristle. necessarily right click. Pick up, throw down. Look at look at Sunra. Instantly tries oh, to go. Swap. Remains the swap was actually really nicely done. This requiem is going to do very very little apart from now bring the shadow fiend back over to battle up against the Bristle pack. He slowed down a little bit, and now in comes the sun from that earth ruling. And Bristle pack one more attack from the SF. Almost not. It's on the back end of it. So Sneeko kills securing, getting sniped a little bit by sniper. And Clockwork, whoa! Cheshire, he's in too deep for the Razors. They're gonna kill off Goddamn and Cheshire Cat. Damn, this guy's got so many life points, especially when he's getting the mech support coming in from the Lich. Yeah, I mean the the mech support, but as well as like the Lich armor mm -hmm. makes him super hard to kill. Oh, especially, Sneaker. they're going again. A pick up, a throw down, wave of terror to return right now. At least Man's got himself a really good jump, but the Yule set to protect the SF for the moment. The Shrapnel's coming down. Remember, this is still the Agassi model on the SF. He got one last raise off the Urn will tick out Manus here. He won't survive that one. A Cheshire Cat again, trying to go deep on the Sniper, who cannot really attack into that. That's a Blade Mount versus a Mask of Manus. Well, actually, his Mask of Manus wore off. But it was still a mask, a, 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 a normal attacking sniper up against the Blade Mount Cheshire. He was going to have luck with that at all. Yeah, and this is pretty much Power Rangers. Uh, you kind of saw it for the last eight or ten minutes, but now they're just going to trash. Clock, long hook. Clock. Man, even that movement. They're just pushing him around right now. Man, at least get the pick off on the Rubik finally. Cheshire Cat, he's in so much trouble. <laughs> Three attacks from the tower falling him, as well as the entire line of Hell Raisers and PR. The Vova saved their welcome. The SF will at least be able to get himself away to safety, but they really overstayed. Yeah, Power Rangers, I, they, they can definitely throw this. They've 
They've shown it in the last two weeks or so that they are not the clean, polished team that they kind of used to be. Uh, they were already, like, always a bit, like, aggressive and a bit sloppy, but they were at least much better when they secured a lead at being able to close out the game. Nowadays, they, they do tend to make a lot of mistakes, but they can afford a lot of mistakes like that at this point. They could probably still control the map enough to get the next Roshan, which, again, will still be in their favor. Mm -hmm. And they've got a super farmed SF. Like, compare the SF's farm, he almost, like, he's going to get to the point where he's double the farm of the sniper. He is going to be going for Butterfly. Not terribly surprising. Considering the injection of money he just received, yeah, he can just bump up to that. Right. But this game right now, I, it kind of feels like it's PRs to lose with that last fight. But their advantage was huge, but they just, they threw so much of it away. Yeah. But what what does PR do from here? Do they keep whoop okay, they can Ah camera. Uh they can just keep ganking. They found the sniper, the blade mouse turned on, so Manus can't even come in to hoof stomp and double edge because he'll just end up killing himself more than likely. And that was just a rock it was it wasn't a rocket scouting. They had an observer ward watching him. Yeah. Hence the hook shot was so good. Yeah, and hence the centaur. Picking that one out a couple times. They know about that ward now, but it's, well, is it too late? They're creating a lot of space by pushing in the bottom lane. The question is, it's do Power Rangers a, a tier 1 for a tier 3 tower? That's not yeah. the greatest trade in the world, especially when you don't have a sniper with a buyback. That's 25 second window for Power Rangers to bring down this tier 3 tower. Goddamn, pick up, throw back down again as well. And he ended up as a ceiling totem again. Not exactly what he was searching for, but he's able to throw it out and get the last attack in with the bonus DPS. So Sniper's up in 10 seconds. There is one hero defending the bottom lane. It's Cheshire Cat. I think he's just trying to stop the TPs. He sees Dreg going out, but he doesn't want Bristleback to be able to TP himself away to safety. In fact, he's actually going to lose his own life points trying to stop that. And now here comes your TP anyway from the Bristleback. PR, they have to get out of here. The, the jump in by Manus with the double hoof stomp into the double edge as well. The Meg Charge will go, but Manus, there was no bump up for the Lich Ultimate. So Nico, again, not what he wants to steal. The Shrapnel should be able to pick him off. In fact, it will be. The sniper just running in there with that mask of madness turned on. And again, Power Rangers fail to bring down the mid racks. They do do a lot of damage to the range, however. Yeah, Cheshire Cat kind of had the right idea there. Execution was a little bit sloppy, but like he can probably stop both of those heroes from TPing back, in which case it's a four versus three, but overextension middle, overextension bottom, and they, they end up losing their, their kind of split that they had going on. And mm -hmm. they, they do at least, as you said bring down the uh, tier 3 middle, but middle it's, it's costing them. They, they have a couple more fights like that. Next thing you know, you can't get Roshan, and that's taken by Hellraisers, and next thing you know, you've got a... Um, the biggest fear for, for Power Rangers is not the sniper, it's the first attack. If he can get his late game items, like if he can get BKB now, and then go into uh, Assault Curas Abyssal, he can definitely take over this game. But it's still like him basically finishing up his mid-game items now, while the SF is already has one of his late-game items in the butterfly. <laughs> Look at Cheshire Cat. He's got a hookshot target. He sees the centaur, but okay, no, he doesn't because the observer ward's gone from there. But he's just trying to find that opening target, and now he does actually hit the centaur. The cogs come up, so you can't get the Bristleback in close, but the four star from the BS pulling him back out of the cogs, and wow, Bristleback just running into the fight. The Meg Charge is going to bring back a lot of the life points, and then you blink into Echo Save with a full fissure, double edge, and the Hulk Stomp. Hellraisers just rip Power Rangers, a new one. Even though they've got the Brewmaster split off, those Brewlings are having little to no effect. Just your cast is trying to get himself out of this one. They realize the Earth Panda, that's the one they want. There's your hoof stomp again. And with the double damage on the Bristleback, the life points are four foot of, of Power Rangers. Cheshire Cat is running away, but I think they're going to lose tier two and tier three in mid because only Lich has buyback for the entire PR. They have a, almost a one minute window with Power Rangers not at full strength. Yeah, Seneco seems pretty upset right now <laughs> that the mini drawing map. that he's putting on the map. I mean, they, they <laughs> essentially, and if, if I was anybody, I would be uh, I would be very angry if I was Cheshire Cat. If, if I was translating that, I was like, this? This was all ours. We owned this. This was our land. Yep, and and then our land was currently mortgaged. Yeah, they, they threw it away. So oh, tier two being taken down, they lose another fight. That's Roshan. No, uh, Roshan's still dead for another two minutes or so. Yeah, I'm saying another bad fight like that has to happen, and then Hellraisers will take Roshan once you have the Aegis. Like, Bristleback is able to go all in on his late game item, whether that's Assault Curas or maybe he goes. 
I mean, it's possible instead of the Assault Cuirass, he goes for the Abyssal first in order to give him raw damage. Because he already has a lot of mitigation with BKB, Hood, as well as Vanguard, and the Sange part of SNY. Mm -hmm. He's pretty tanky, so he may not feel like he needs uh, the Assault Cuirass part. And just go for the more damage controlling bit. MKB also needs to be built by the Sniper eventually. Looks like he's going to be finishing up his uh, BKB first so we can deal with the clockwork a bit better. Mm -hmm. Which is concerning. Oh, uh, uh, shake up. carrying the game. Uh, he's going to be okay. Well, okay. I take it back. I take it back. The creep wave is going to be there. Battery is all stopping God from getting an ability off. And he's got no way out of this one. Unless he can get the fissure off Tishikat. He's running battery assault charges. So oh Goddamn can flick God. himself away to safety. The rocket, nine life points. He'll survive Goddamn over on the side. The fissure, he even evades it from Taniko, which puts him in a horrible position for the hop stomp into How assassination. So, so lucky. Ah, man, he is just robbing the bald head right oh now. Oh, my he is God. So good. The RNG there of the battery assault literally not hitting him, <laughs> and he's more. able to Dude, blink out. No, 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 it doesn't even like it doesn't matter HP wise. As long as he can't blink out, Clockwork gets that kill. But he literally didn't get hit for three full seconds. Was able to blink away, and then the most minor bit of AOE is missed on that Fisher. That uh, Earthshaker doesn't get hit by that one either. So that was unbelievably lucky. Uh, but. I don't know, Hellraisers definitely do turn it around quite well. That was probably a bad idea for Cheshire Cat. He sees this free kill, but at the same time, like uh, even if he did get the Earthshaker. Tried. Battling up here with uh, with Sunra. He's going to go up and towards the air, and uh, BKB, he knows he can't TP out this one because the swap is still available. Going around the corner, get the vision, bring him back in again. So Brusselback can keep beating into the SF, and then he waits out the Hobstop Mantis. The Brusselback will be the man to get the kill, however. And that window I was talking about before, which was the one minute window when you got a couple heroes down, is now a 70 second window yep. with Power Rangers not having their Shadow Fiend. Roshan is up as well. The Rocket Mine Scout for it. But you've also got Observers and Sentries down for Hell Racers. They will see PR coming to contest them if they even try to do this. Well, if you're a Power Rangers fan, if you bet on Power Rangers for, uh, for some reason, you are praying to Cheshire Cat to make a big play right now. Mm-hmm. I don't like some sort of Aegis deal or something. I don't know. But if you put your res on Hellraiser, you're praying that Hellraiser could wrap this one up because no, that I'm means sure you win res. Fissure over on Clockwork and Cheshire Cat. Well, you want a hallelujah play, man. But right now he's part of the Choir of Angels. Power Rangers, they are down again with another hero. This has to be a mid push, though. I have to still find Raxus. Okay, maybe not mid. They're actually going for the bottom lane instead. It's like they're still giving a lot of respect to what that Brewmaster Ultimate, or they just want to make sure they get the tier 2 tower at I least. think it's just like, hey, let's get the immediate in, uh, influx of tier 2 tower gold for us before we back up and just farm up the map. Mm -hmm. um, they may not want to force the fight while the SF is up, um, but we'll see in just a minute here. They do have the mid lane pushing out as well as bottom, so we'll see if they actually go uphill or not. Uh, when it's four versus five. Four attack. versus six. Six, really. I, I'm also going to flag the fact that oh, Hell Raiders don't have to go up high ground. All they got to do is just have the sniper hit from low ground. Oh, yeah. Because he'll just reach uh, the tower anyway. Like, you can set the Brussels back up like this. He's got an Aegis model with all that tank ability, so he's fine doing what he's doing. Yeah, they, they, they definitely need the Bristle back hitting the tower because, again, the sniper still isn't there when it comes to damage, but I'm kind of liking what they did as well. By putting the shrapnel over on the side, it means the Brewmaster has to cut across the uh, the wave in order to blink down and into the sniper. Either that or he walks out through the middle, but you got to observe what's watching for that movement as well. Now, Clockwork, Cheshire, he could get the hook into Mantis. The sniper's still got a BKB as well as Cheese, so he can't really kill the sniper. Have they... Wait, what the hell? The that Brewmaster, Brewmaster Aldi's gone. They pop the ultimate. Yeah, they actually walk in with a Storm Brewling and Shadow Fiend just initiates out. But where's your kills? Mantis, he's dropping low at the moment. He can't bail out to the tree lines and away, but a force off up from Jessica Cat. He's still chasing the Centaur to the end of the Earth. One rocket. He's got hook shot back off cooldown. Finally gets a pick up. There's a one-for-one -one trade off. The SF and Lich now actually going to make it a two up as uh, Rubik is able to mop up the Vengeful Spirit at the back end of play. Assassination Cheshire Cat. He's got hook shot in one second time, but he's blocked up by the creep wave. So we're able to really do anything else. Assassination from Sneeko. He oh. wants to finish the Hearth Shaker. Able to do it. The Sniper returning the kill. Able to pick up a triple as well during this engagement. They did lose a hell of a lot for this. The Brewmaster, he's back at base healing up. 
Yeah, they, they've still got Aegis and Cheese up, so that's probably the bottom lane of Rax. They don't have buybacks, so. That's also full of Salt Curious and the Bristle back. Yeah. Um, except the Courier's already on the way out, and it's only bringing a smoke. I think this is a bit of a missed micro here. Oh, well. Uh, that's meant to bring the AC for the Bristle back. Unless it's for the Aegis time, that and he picks it up from the Dire Shop. Either way, this bottom Rax, they're just sticking with objective based gaming. They're beating through it. The mid tier 3 towers under siege as well. And Roger, he can't do anything. His ult is on cooldown for 18 seconds, and he has no team. Uh, he's going to blink in right now, but I feel like this is just throwing away his life. Yeah, I mean, he went for the early... To, uh, he went for the mid-game build, right? Aghanims, which you don't see as much anymore, is very much a mid-game build and starts falling off heavily in the late game. Well, you threw away enough that 40 minutes is certainly late game for Hellraisers. And now that they've got all their BKBs, I mean, that, that was the tough part, right? Power Rangers had to find some sort of way to initiate, but how? They're completely countered by BKBs. Cheshire Cat is no longer good enough. He can't just jump on the sniper. He's it's got BKB, Mask Manus, and Chief. Was the Brewmaster split really the wise thing to do to run in with that? I don't know. I, they, they thought maybe, like, getting a Cyclone, a sneaky Cyclone to start with and then initiating. It looked impressive, but... <laughs> Hellraisers were able to be pretty quick on their feet. They just quickly pop their BKBs, and then there goes your initiation. Kind of they really split the fight up as well. Like, the fact that Clockwork spent so long chasing after the Centaur was a little bit too much, because then the SF, like, the Wreck Room Assault, didn't really feel like it did that much in the fight. Mm -hmm. And now, like, it, as, as is with going with a Phantom Assassin carry, it seems like MKB is, like, the nail in the coffin. Right now that you have MKB on the sniper, there goes Butterfly for Dijira. There goes the natural evasion of the Brewmaster, plus his Drunken Haze, no longer effective. And there goes a Halberd as well from the Clockwork. So that's your three cores, who all had evasion, are now completely countered by BKB and MKB. Yeah. Uh, this sniper has to give some kills, uh, like some of that uh, uh, that mid lane into Mantis. <laughs> He's uh, 100 gold away from having a full Shivas. Dyer's middle oh, tower is, really? is oh. under attack. Yeah. Well, that's just more counter-initiation, I suppose. Mm -hmm. More tank ability as well. Here comes that Brewmaster ulti coming in again. Who are they looking for? They want to take the Brussel back out of play. The Storm Brewing runs up, and then he comes back down again. As they see an option to kill off Dread very, very quickly. But again, it's a 1-1 support, support trade, and the Stampede stolen by the Rubik. But it's not giving him enough positional advantage. The Sniper just stands his ground, keeps battling it out. The Echo Slam comes in too, and the Centaur locked, controlled. Oh, I've been locking and controlling the Brewmaster. They lose four, and it's a GG call. Power Rangers will take the game 2-0 here. And Power Rangers, after two series in the group stages of the D2CL, still find themselves without a victory. Yeah, over a 12,000 gold lead, and a uh, pretty big experience lead as well. Power Rangers just couldn't close out the deal. Too many mistakes, too many sloppy plays. Yep. Um, I don't know what, what the deal is. They've really fallen off ever since DAC. I'm not sure if that demotivated them or what, um, but they certainly just aren't the team uh, that you used to see, and they actually seem to be getting steadily worse as time goes on. I mean, they had a good recovery there. They had a rocky early game start, but mm -hmm. they still managed to find their feet, managed to take control of the game pretty heavily, and then just, like, I mean, diving Tier 4 tower, and that's on Shashir Cat. Like, he set this whole entire game up for a victory for Power Rangers, but yeah. then decided, like, diving Tier 4 tower. Yeah, he, he, he wanted idea. that quick pick off so they could take the entire rack as opposed yeah. to just the tower. And it's it's knowing how much you can get. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if you can really blame him for it. Like, you've been having the game of your life so far. And then you're like, okay, I think we can go even further than this. Let's just try and beat the crap out of them. We take this game. And maybe even then, as an extended thing, a moral victory for your team. If you're feeling a little bit down and out, try and get the full moral victory out there and just pound away at, uh, at Hellraiser and say, you know what, it might be a 1-1, but this game is something we can take and remember for our next series we play. Yeah. Uh, but either way, uh, that's going to be wrapping up this game. So Hellraisers versus PR. It comes to a close. There are more broadcasts coming up later tonight with e uh, with Not Today going up against Wheel. This is in roughly two hours from now, uh, which will be um, over on our, our JD MLG stream. So you can check that one out. Uh, go to joinit.com if you're looking for the link for that one. You can enjoy the coverage for that. Mon Capitalist will be staying up and doing the late, the late shift tonight. I was doing it last night. We had a really good EG game tonight. So I'm hoping... 
with some cool stuff. Yeah, Not Today versus uh, Wheel should be very close match. Mm -hmm. Not Today looking in top form. Wheel probably one of the best. Not Today is actually, North I believe, uh, number one. Yeah, number one over there. Oh too. yeah, they've been they've been crushing it lately. They've been facing up against some of the weaker teams, I would say. They're seven one. Um, yeah. but Wheel, I think, will be a test for them. I still put Not Today a little bit ahead though. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to see that game, go to johnedit.com, find the link for that one. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Uh, VODs will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, so youtube.com forward slash join Dota. And uh, you can also view them right here over on Twitch. So I hope you enjoy the show. More D2CL as well will be coming up next week on Monday. Monday, Tuesday, and sometimes Wednesday are your days for the D2CL. The rest of them are holiday days as well as days to play other competitions. We've also got our JD Masters beginning uh, tomorrow, I believe it is, in the afternoon where we have fire going up against. Uh, team Arena Tinkerino. You can check out joinedit.com for the details and new news articles up with the grid for that one too. So it's all over on the website. Should be some great games coming your way. And uh, of course, uh, we do stream in multiple locations. So make sure you follow our social networks as we'll let you know when we're streaming, where we're streaming, and how we're streaming. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time on the live stream.